Just letting you know, this is only my spoiler first impressions of the episode. Check my pinned comment for a free gift related to this video. And to watch my unfiltered reactions with exclusive bonuses, join my Asha Media TV club. The link is in the description box below. Now, here's my afterthoughts of this episode of Supernatural. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Whew. Yeah, not, not even going to. I'm just going to enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. I'm trying. I'm trying. I say this a lot too for myself. I know. I'm repetitive on it and, and half the time I, I don't even practice what I'm trying to preach. It's because it's momentum, people. Momentum. It's lifelong habits I'm trying to reduce and then shift into new habits. Which it's it's kind of working more with fringe because fringe is 10 times more overloaded for me. So all the more so I have to practice even more. But anyway, um, this episode is... I gotta mark it because it exemplifies what I always want to watch in, in Supernatural. This is like one of the perfect episodes since the Kripke shows, right? Because so many of Kripke's episodes are just perfection. I mean, just even the last episode of the of season five is is one hundred percent for me. Um, but this one is one hundred percent for me as well. I cannot find nothing wrong that I would, you know, go, eh, except for maybe that last part, you know, you know <laughs> how did you find Rowena? But the point is he found her. And the point is he knew that she would be the right person based on the details that Dean gave him at the beginning of the episode. Oh my God. It, it, it is just perfection. Action from beginning to end. Action that didn't feel forced. It tied in nicely. It, the pacing was perfect. So if anybody who should be getting the most credit for this show, or for this episode, excuse me, is the editor and the director. The director directed amazing shots, cinematography, of course, and the editor. It The editor is really the true hero, in my opinion, after the fact, because the editor, with the director's approval, but not always, not always the case for film, uh, excuse me, for TV. Film, yes, but TV, no. A lot of the times the director doesn't have that final say with the final cut of things. They'll have an idea of things, but it's not always, it's not always the case. And mind you, I don't know with CW. It, it's, it's, anyways, I'm not going to get into that. The point is the editor put together a fantastic episode because they had fantastic scenes to work with. Like this is one of those episodes. I would love to see what was on the cutting room floor, because if this is what you got as a final product that, means they had probably a lot of scenes to work with. Oh, okay, I'm going on a tangent. This is how excited I am. So, five Ash emojis a la max. Best episode of the entire season. One of the best episodes of an entire series so far. This definitely has made it to my top 10 list and replaced another episode, um, which I won't be divulging till I finish the whole series. But yeah, um, loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. Every single scene counted. Every single scene had me going. This is beyond rewatchable. This is rewatchable even after you think you, you've known everything. You're just entertained. It's rewatchable for entertainment, for information, for stuff you missed, for Easter eggs. <sighs> it was so good. So good. Okay. I have so many favorite scenes, but... I guess the first one that comes to mind right away is the Castiel, you know, the Castiel back in full flow scene. Very good, very much goosebumpy moments of the first time we saw Castiel and all the damage that was done and his wings popping out, Misha Collins and all his gorgeousness. It was it was really, really reminiscent of that. And I think that's what they were trying to replicate. I mean, you have this amazing effect of the library blowing up. Oh, that was beautiful. But it's the lead up to it that they did so right with the pacing, with Metatron, his monologue, what he was trying to do. Oh my goodness, come on. We got to give it up to Curtis Armstrong. Even if you can't stand him, you cannot deny this man's talent and why they cast him. I, it's just phenomenal. He is a case study in itself. I mean... There's got to be at least one viewer out there that has written something uh, about the Metatron character. He's very, very fascinating. Out of all the characters they've presented, he's one I cannot wait to read more about and learn more about. 
Um, I think he's just absolutely a brilliant character to put in this show. So that's the yeah, scene. That's scene number one that I love very much. Um, I very much love that scene. Uh, uh, excuse me, with um, Dean and his. I'm calling him Rugged Dean. There's Rugged Dean and there's Pretty Dean. Because <laughs> they look alike. They're both very good looking men. The, the, there was a similarity there. And the introduction of this family, I'm totally on board with them. I pray to God they do not drop the ball. Don't tell me any hints if they don't or do not. That's a spoiler. Just let me have it. Okay? But similar to how they brought up that um, that group, the Nazi group, you know, for one episode, and then we just never heard about them again, I, I hope they don't do that with this. Or if they do decide to let it go, at least maximize them, which I think that's what they're going to likely do with this season and uh, with them chasing down this book that is now in the hands of uh, a very powerful witch. So to see her possibly try to deal with them, because I'm sure they'll locate the book at some point to her. And what's the price? What's the price of removing that mark? I mean, if it's the most powerful mark a human can get, to the point of immortality, to the point of reaching the status of what Cain reached and then having to take him down. If God is not in the picture, they better show me an equal or greater reason for that. Because this is biblical status here, right? I mean, the mark of Cain. Cain is a major Bible character. I know who God is, right? So. If he can show up for a f***ing musical, <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's, I think, a fair, logical conclusion. And if it's if it's not going to be the case with Chuck, you know, I want them to really validate what other reason could be greater than him. Woo! Wow. I, I can go on and on. I can go on and on. Point is, I love this episode. It's fantastic. And I hope to see more of it towards the end of the season. I want the season finale episode to blow my mind the way this one did. Okay? I want it to blow my mind. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. But that's the expectation that this episode has now brought with me. Right? Like the bar. They've set this bar now. They better fucking fulfill it. <laughs> but don't worry. Don't worry. If they disappoint me, I, 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 you know, with Supernatural, it's hit or miss. So I'm understanding of that. I'm trying to be understanding of that. Although they, they, they as I said in the, for the previous episode, that was so good. There's no reason for them to have that many hit and misses. But okay, okay. Great episode. I'm going to move on to episode 19. See you in that one. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and check out my other videos.